What if the reality of the king and queen's recent Kenyan tour isn't as rosy as the palace would have us believe? Welcome to Majesty Moments, your source for the latest news about the British royal family. Your voyage into the world of royal updates starts here. According to palace aides, King Charles and Queen Camilla's tour of Kenya was a resounding success. They were thrilled with the outcome and even planned an extensive Commonwealth tour for next year. But is this the whole truth? Reports from Kenyan journalists paint a different picture. They've highlighted several issues, including allegations of racist treatment faced by African journalists. They also pointed out the British government's refusal to provide food for local journalists. This isn't just about a lack of lunch, it's about respect and recognition. It seems the palace is making a concerted effort to control the narrative, downplaying any negative aspects of the tour. This strategy mirrors a similar one employed after Prince William's trip to New York. It's a contrast of official statements versus on-the-ground experiences, and it raises questions about the transparency and impact of royal tours. So the palace paints a picture of a successful tour, but the local journalists tell a different story. Which one would you believe? But this isn't the first time such a contrast has arisen, is it? Indeed, we've seen this before during Prince William's New York trip. There too, the palace sought to paint a picture of success and positivity, downplaying any hiccups along the way. The art of narrative control is a subtle one. It's about steering the conversation, highlighting the good, and gently brushing the less desirable elements under the rug. For instance, during these royal tours, you'll often hear about the warm receptions, the successful engagements, and the strengthening of bonds. What you might not hear about are the logistical challenges, the cultural misunderstandings, or the occasional gaffes. You see, the palace, like any institution, wants to present the best possible image to the world. It's about brand management, about preserving a certain mystique that surrounds the monarchy. But this strategy isn't without its pitfalls. When the official narrative diverges too much from the on-the-ground experiences of local journalists or individuals, it can lead to skepticism. People start to question the authenticity of the narrative being presented. They start to wonder about the things that are not being said. Once again, we see the palace trying to control the narrative. But does this strategy really work, or does it only raise more questions about transparency? As we ponder on these differing perspectives, one question remains. What's the real impact of these royal tours? On the one hand, these tours can serve as a powerful means of diplomacy, fostering international relationships and showcasing the vibrancy of the Commonwealth. They offer an opportunity for the royals to engage with diverse cultures, acknowledging and appreciating their unique traditions and histories. However, if the recent Kenyan tour is anything to go by, there can be a darker side. Allegations of racist treatment and disregard for local journalists can taint the image of these tours, turning them from a beacon of unity to a source of division. Looking ahead, King Charles and Queen Camilla are planning a more extensive Commonwealth tour next year. Will the lessons from Kenya be taken on board, or will they be swept under the royal carpet? Will the palace manage to steer clear of controversy, or will they again find themselves at odds with the very people they aim to connect with? As we look forward to the next royal tour, we must ask ourselves, what do we want these tours to achieve? And more importantly, are they living up to our expectations? Thank you for tuning into Majesty Moments. Watch our next video called The Middleton's Business Collapse, A Royal Scandal. Stay connected, stay inspired and keep enjoying the royal updates.